when you ask any dotnet developer why he prefers stored procedures as compared to inline queries and most of them you know will reply back with a standard statement saying that stored procedures are pre compiled they are cached you know so the performance is much better in this video we'll try to remove this misconception that stored procedures increase performance now uh, let me first explain this sentence you know which uh, people repeat that stored procedures are pre compiled they are cached you know so the performance is better what exactly uh, the programmers mean, mean by this so when we fire the sql for the first time three things happen first the sql syntax is checked for any errors second you know depending on cluster indexes non cluster indexes and lots of other things the best plan is selected to execute the sql and finally the sql is executed now when the second time the sql runs it again goes through all these three stages that is checking of syntaxes selection of a plan and then query execution but in case of stored procedure there is a exception in case of stored procedures the plan which is generated right first time it gets cached in other words when second time the stored procedure runs he does not have to generate the plan he just goes and executes a query now you know this statement was valid for the older versions of sql server but from sql server 2005 onwards all sql statements irrespective it comes from a inline sql it comes you know from from some sql analyzer it comes from stored procedures or from anywhere right they are compiled and cached in other words if you fire the sql either in a form of a stored procedure or either you fire the sql from a dot net uh, code both of them will have the same kind of performance so what we'll do is let's go ahead and do some couple of experiments to see that you know if this statement is right or not so here's a very simple database i have called as mycusdb and this mycusdb has a simple table here called as users table now you know this users table is actually used by applications to validate if the user is existing in the system or not so for the same you know we have also created a very simple stored procedure here, here called as sp_login and i have also created a very simple dotnet application here uh which actually goes and uses the sp underscore login to validate if the user is existing in the system or not so what we'll do is we'll first go and run this application by using stored procedures and then we will use the sql profiler to see that if it uses the cache or not so what should happen logically is that you know as everyone is saying that a uh, stored procedures you know uh, they run the first time and in the next time you know they use the plan from the cache you know rather than creating uh, from the scratch right so what we'll do is we'll run this application from here and meanwhile we'll also go and run our profiler to see that you know if the cache is used or not so let us go and run our profiler here and while we run the profiler what we'll do is you know we'll capture those events uh, which will help us to uh, what you call understand you know if the sql cache has been used or if the sql cache has been created okay so what we'll do is let's go ahead and uncheck all these events because these are not important for now and let's click on this show all event checkbox here and if you scroll below right now you can see there are two events here one is sp cache insert and the other one is sp cache hit now the sp cache insert event will occur you know whenever the plan is created and put into cache in other words when the first time your stored procedure runs the sp cache insert event will occur and after that when second and third time your stored procedure runs the sp cache hit event will occur the sp cache hit event indicates that your plan is taken from the cache and it is not recreated okay so these are the two events you know we'll be interested in second what i'll do is i'll also go and select some columns here because we would like to go and select some columns so we would like to know which application is running and also i'd like to go and select something called as the object id object id object id oops oops yeah that is 
and also I like to go and put some column filters here because in this PC right there are lots of other applications running and currently I'm not interested in listening to SQLs from those applications so what I'll do is I'll say that okay uh, please go and track you know whatever is dot net right second I'll say okay uh, go and uh, uh, track those SQLs you know which comes from administrator right Okay, I'll just say OK and I'll say run. So you can see now the trace has started. That is good. So let's go ahead and run our application. So there my application is running. What I'll do is I'll just go and click on this profiler here. And uh, let me go and put the .NET application side by side. Now when I'm going to hit this login button over here, right, it's actually going to go and execute this stored procedure over here. Okay. So what I'll do is let me go and hit now a couple of times. So first, when I hit, when I click on the when I click for the first time, right? If I click on the first for the first time, you can see the SP cache insert event has occurred. Now again, if I click on login, right, you can see the cache hit event is occurring, right? So if you see, watch very closely, right? Let me just go and expand this. So you can see over here when the first time. Uh, you know the stored procedure ran uh, it actually created the plan and it put that plan into the cache so that's why the SP cache insert event occurred after that you know whenever the stored procedure fired the, the second and the third and the fourth time it always took the plan from the cache so as everyone said that yes stored procedure increase, increases performance why because the first time the plan is created it is put into cache and after that you know it's always fetched from the cache now what we'll do is let's go back to the application here and let me now go and comment this code out okay so I'm going to go and comment this code out and what I'll do is I'll go and use simple inline SQL so I'm going to go and uncomment this code so you can now see that I'm using simple select statement here and uh, as said previously that after SQL 2005 from whichever uh, place you know the SQL comes to the uh, SQL comes to the SQL server, it will always cache it. So what I'll do is now I'll go and execute this application, and we'll try to see that if the SQL cache hit event occurs or not. So let me just go and run this application here, and let's again go and switch back to a profiler, and uh, now you can see that we have our application running here these are all old results so what I'll do is I'll just go and clear them up and let me go and again start tracing now we are using simple inline SQL so if I now go and hit the login button you can see the cache insert event occurring now if I go and again hit the login button you can see now the cache hit event is occurring right so let me just go and expand this so again if you see now even though this is an inline SQL it is still using the cache hit event in simple words your SQL now either comes from an inline .NET code or if it either comes from a stored procedure the performance will be the same why because now you know all the SQLs irrespective it comes from anywhere it will be cached the plan will be cached and the cache will be used so I hope that I have removed the misunderstanding that stored procedures increase performance uh, from SQL Server 2005 onwards right you fire the SQL from whichever place you want the same kind of cache mechanism will be executed the same kind of plan will be created so now you can happily go and write your SQL in a stored procedure or if you wish you can go and write uh, on your inline code at least the performance aspect will not be affected said and done that you know still stored procedures has a lot of benefits for example stored procedures you know help you to centralize your code stored procedures uh, you know you can define uh, rights and securities on stored procedures so there are lots of other benefits you know but at least you know the performance aspect is now same uh, you know as compared to inline code or as compared to any other SQL which is fired from any other place so I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that I've removed the misunderstanding thank you so much now here's a small favor you can do for us or I'll say it's a small request from us okay 
uh, if you think that you know whatever we are doing here on this channel is cool it is nice you know it will help out people what you can do is you can go ahead and share this video you know either on your Facebook account on your Twitter account on your Orkut on blogger you know whichever channel you are associated with please do go ahead and talk about this video by doing this small favor you know you are helping us to know that what activity we are doing is it worth for the community or not so go ahead you know if you like this video share it on your facebook account twitter blogger myspace orkut google plus whatever it is you know and let the world know that here's a resource of videos you know which dotnet developers can see and they can learn from it